Hey guys, and welcome back to Hogwarts Legacy. In this video, we're talking about Advanced Potion and Plant Farm Setup Guide, which is basically going to help you know how to set up your farms and your potions at an end game level. Like I'm only level 32. I've just done my second trial in the game. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move into our room of requirement first here to show you where you're gonna set up these farms. I'm gonna show you what I have and how you can set it up to have a similar thing. So go to your room of requirement, right? Where I put all my, my herbology stuff and everything's down here, right? So you can see here, this place is, is full. It's a, it's a lot more interesting than it was in a previous video I made of, of this whole setup, right? So there's a bunch going on here and I'm gonna explain it. So this is the potion section. Now, there are two major potion um, spell crafts that you can use here. It's the T-shaped potion things here, which you can make three potions at a time, which comes in handy really well. You can see here, I've actually pre-made one of all the different types of potions in every three slots here, so that as I've used them, I can literally just come and collect them. And you can see here, my inventory is full. By the way, you can only have a maximum of 12 of every single thing here. So the fact that I have 12 here and everything's full here is as I use them, I can just come claim them. Like here, here's some Wiganwald. Wiganwald goes to 25, so you can go use them here. Now, the best thing about these T-shaped potion stations is that you start on the left, you press the one, you press this arrow button here, or for me, it's just like D on the keyboard, and you press Wiganwald and you can go across like all three of them at once so that you can save time by crafting more in that way. There's also a conjuration for this special pot over here that actually brews a random potion, you know, like I think every 10 minutes or so. It's not entirely needed, but I mean, hey, it's it's here, I guess. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it though, because I have so many resources for everything else. If you are struggling for resources, maybe you can look at this. It is 3000 gold galleons for the, the conjuration. Okay, so that's it for potions. It's quite simple. Potions are simple. The, the planting, however, is quite different because plants come in large, medium, and small, right? Now for your potting tables, the, the, the key is, is that you're only allowed to have seven tables. That's one, that's two, this is three, that's four, five, six, and then seven, that long one at the back there. And you get them in different sizes. Small, you can see these are all small pots and I have five of them. These are medium and they, they have a maximum, the maximum table size is to have three of them. You can see here we have two mediums and then we have two larges because different plants can be planted in different sizes and require sometimes a bigger size. So when you're buying your conjurations and your spell crafts, I recommend as soon as you can, it's going to cost quite a bit. It's going to cost like almost 10,000 gold galleons. But once you have the money and you can afford it, the setup will keep you going for the rest of the game, I bet, because I'm, I'm literally stocked full. For the large pots, I recommend getting the one that has two large pots, one in one stand, so that you can put two of these down and have a total of four slots to use, just with two tables. For the medium, the biggest one you can get is with three pots, so obviously get those, and I recommend placing two of them down. And then for the smalls, they get they actually come in like fives, right? So it has five small pots. I recommend placing three of these down here, so you actually have 15 small pots just by three tables, which is fantastic. And in terms of what you're gonna plant in them, the first one is Dittany leaves. You can just plant Dittany leaves. This is for healing potions, trust me. I have so many of these right now that it's, I don't even need them anymore. And then Mellow Sweet leaves for doing Merlin trials, which you're gonna get a lot as well, because I mean, you get five for every single one that you harvest, which is crazy. Then you have Knot Gross Sprig. So Knot Gross can also grow in small. And then for the Mandrakes, which is the, obviously the kind of like, you know, this thing over here, for that thing, you can plant them like here, right? So I'm just gonna collect that one and restock my inventory. And you can collect five of them at a time here. So for the combat plants, you only get one at a time instead of five, like for the, the normal herbs. So for here, if you wanna increase that one, that yield one to two, you can use fertilizer so that the next time you loot this, it gives you two mandrakes instead of one. I'll show you how to get fertilizer in a second. Let's move on to the medium tables. In the medium tables, I recommend planting shrivel fig, like three of them here. And then for the other one, it's it's Chinese chomping cabbage, which is obviously another another combat plant over here. As you can see, these things over here, I actually have the talent that spawns two of them when I throw one. And these are really nice. You guys should use them more often. Also recommend using your fertilizer on these so that you can collect more of them. Instead of one, you can collect two at a time when you use fertilizer. And then for the large pots here, I recommend planting venomous tentacular, which I've done three times, though you can do two times, and then do flexweed, I mean fluxweed, 
like two times, but honestly, I haven't used Fluxweed a lot, so I've kept it to one little region here. And if I really need more, I'll just use a fertilizer on it like that, so it increases the output of how much I gain. Okay, so I'm sure you saw some other tables or things that I ignored in here. Now, that is these ones over here. You can place three of these. These basically brew in every nine minutes, they give you one random herb, just one. Honestly, it's not worth it. I, I, I wouldn't even recommend getting this. If, if I knew it was like this slow, I, I wouldn't get it. But since I bought it, I am obviously just making use of it. But one herb from each of them every nine minutes compared to like when I just loot one of these things and I get like five. So it's super not worth it. But the fertilizer compost dung collector thingies are amazing because every four minutes you can collect a bag of fertilizer, which you use on the, on the plants over here. So you literally just go here and fertilizer and boom double the increase there and you can place three of these fertilizer dung collector thingamabobs just like that which is fantastic so that is pretty much what my advanced system looks like so if you're looking to get all the seeds and all the spellcraft conjurations let me go show you where you buy everything so we're going to go ahead here and go to hogsmeade because everything is done in hogsmeade all roads lead to hogsmeade now let's start off with the store over here tomes and scrolls on the southern end over here this is the first one we're going to go to so in this store, you're going to be able to buy all the Spellcraft Conjurations that you're going to use. You can see here, I only have four left in the store, and they're all the ones that I didn't want. Remember, I said the large potting table with two pots, and then we got the medium with three pots, and we got the small one with five. Anything short of that is not really worth it, and you're probably just going to waste your money, so don't even bother buying those. But for everything else, you can buy it. Now, in order to get the potion recipes, we're going to go to J. Pippin's Potions over here. And I'm sure you've been here a few times before. So here's the potion store. We're going to go inside. And basically, this guy will sell you all of the potion recipes. They'll be in like these little brown bags at the top here. I already own them, so they're no longer in the store. It's way more effective to craft your own stuff than to buy them. So make sure you take use of that. In terms of all the herbs and the plants that you can plant in your potters, you're going to be going to two stores. The Magic Neep, which is located over here and then Dogweed and Deathcap, which is located at the north of Hogsmeade, right over there. So these two stores will sell the, the herbs, the seeds that you need. And what one packet of seeds is permanent, it means if you buy the seed, you'll always be able to plant it infinitely in all the planters as you need them. The Dogweed and Deathcap store mainly sells the combat plants. So the Chinese Chomping Cabbage, the Mandrake, and the Venomous Tentacula. And then it just becomes a, you know, a building kind of necessity to use your conjuration in your room of requirement to build all the things you need. Like for the potion stands here, instead of building the small one, you're going to build a T-shaped one. You're going to build, in fact, seven of them. You can see here it says seven out of seven conjured, which means you can only have seven of these tables present. Now that means seven out of all of these, right? Keep in mind that going left and right here are just different styles, but these are all the same thing. And these are all T-shaped. These are all singular ones. And this is like a medium one. So this one has two, this one has one, and this one has three brewing stations. This one's the best. And then here's that like hopping pot that I don't recommend buying, the one that makes a random potion every so often. Not worth it. In terms of herbology, you have small plants, you have medium plants, and you have large plants. And then we have the, the compositors. This is for the fertilizer. I don't recommend getting the chopping stations as we talked about earlier. It's like, you know, nine minutes to get one random ingredient. Not really worth it for the price. So in the small pots, you're going to use the one that is this really long table that has the five small pots. Remember, these are just styles, so just one of these. For the medium, we're going to use the one that has the three medium pots. You can see here, I didn't even buy the one that has like one medium pot or two medium pots. I straight up bought the one with three because I didn't want to waste my money even bothering with these. Just go straight, Just go straight with the big stuff and ignore that. And then for the large pots, we are using, instead of one single large pot, we're using a table with two large pots, which is these tables here. And of course, you can use seven of these. We used three of these, we used two mediums, and we used two larges. In total, that is seven potting tables. So yeah, that's how we set that all up. And that's pretty much how you have an advanced setup for your farm, your potions, and your herbology to get all your plants. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for watching.